Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris bringing it to you from Westlake Village, California. And today we're going to talk about Bitcoin price action. We're going to talk about some of the news events surrounding the macroeconomics and Ethereum, which I think is a little bit easier chart to take a look at starting it off with where Bitcoin's or excuse me, Ethereum's price was trapped over the weekend. So uh, market is uh, futures market is closed from Friday to Sunday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And um, essentially, price was trapped between uh, 1650 to the upside. Oh, that's a nice TP there. Nice little TP going there. And that's what I was just about to tell you is we we're looking at tapping the bottom side of the box. And if it wants to go for more right now, uh, the next level down is 1643. I do think we'll get a bounce off of that level. And what I was going to say is, look, any kind of a higher low here, I'm looking to, uh, excuse me, uh, any kind of a lower high here, I'm looking to short. Ultimately, I do think there's a possibility of a pretty nasty wick coming in here. And it's probably going to be surrounding some kind of a news event. So I love the liquidations heat map. You can see this down here at 1630, uh, 1630, 1609 and uh, 1600 bucks. A lot of liquidity down to the downside, but there's also a lot to the upside for Mr. Ethereum and Bitcoin as well. Um, so uh, the move I was just looking to looking to take because uh, Ethereum is trading just a little bit easier right now. I feel um, nice tag down to the bottom side. Oh, okay, so losing the train of thought here. Broader picture on the four hour, we're still stuck in the box, stuck in the box. So the four hour closure above or below there, probably going to kind of get us the next move. And I do imagine we're just gonna range a little bit more here and kind of fill out this huge gap uh, and candle as the order books are now messed up, right? So the price action, a little to the upside, a little to the downside. I think we're gonna test 1737 to the upside, 1626 to the downside that's my evaluation on mr ethereum checking in on bitcoin also still stuck in the box here uh 15 minute time frame are you giving away any of the goods here can we bolster any confidence from from uh um you know what perhaps could be uh, the setup on the 50 minute time frame. Just looking at price action looks a bit sloppy here up down sideways. And we haven't quite gotten, you know, our uh, our VR, the W, V or the W. What am I talking about here? Um, I'm talking about. Well, if it's going to be a W, I'm trying to, you know, see the W, right? So the price action moves in waves breaks down higher time frames we got the consolidation so boom the question is how many moves did we get to the downside since price action moves in waves of three on the hourly time frame just trying to put my own thoughts on paper here guys um looking at the 15 minute time frame and we got the restructuring I believe here one two three big red candles so we got the first break of structure the first cross down on the 15 minute time frame right that's what we're looking for, these three waves and just counting them down. So we got one consolidation, uh, retracer consolidation, breakdown, retracer consolidation, two. And then here was the third one. And we said, hey, look, probably going to get a bounce from there or it's going to break down pretty hard and tag our 27 Well, that was our 27.5 target. But if we lost it on that wick, we said, yeah, likely 25,000 to the downside. Anyways, uh, back on to what I was talking about. So that was our third level drown, but now we had a retest and uh, a breakdown. So it resets here. We're looking for another three levels down. Here's one. 
and two, three. So where could that perhaps take us? So here's our consolidation retrace. And uh, that's why even if we bounce it up on Bitcoin back to about 27.6, that would just be a retrace. And I would expect one more continuation push probably into this trend line as we haven't quite tagged it yet. And this is coming back from the weekly lows, I believe. Let's see, yes. <laughs> The weekly lows so one wick in there how far down does it go overall i'm still macro bullish even if the black arc wants to throw it down to twenty thousand, i think we're going to pick ourselves up fire bootstraps and do what bitcoin always typically does what am i talking about pre-having you know you get a bit of a rally and then of a bit of then a bit of a sell-off to the tune of about 30 percent and then uh going into the having post having year you get that major bull market but uh, just going to pull up uh bitcoin on our blx index chart which is a bit of a bigger chart and you can still see even on the index we got potential for the higher low here and a bounce off of what I would consider a test of the green 55 on the weekly time frame. What happened to the Gaussian channel? I'm just curious. The Gaussian channel. And we're going to talk about the golden ha handcuffs. What are we talking about? The, um, the golden handcuffs. And we did close below the top side of the mean band giving us the impetus of a test of the band 24.3 you close below the band looking to target the bottom side of the band and uh you know you can simply see that first closure below well we test the mean band and closure below test the next band down so just give you an idea on how this uh this indicator does work and ta is not an exact science more of an art Go back test for yourself. And by the way, link in the description below. Smash the like button if you're enjoying some of the content and uh, send it out to a friend. Looks like ETH, is, ETH the beef is about to pick itself on the pick itself up on the shorter term time frame. Um, but I just wanted to bring, you know, macro kind of back into play. Still making those higher highs and higher lows. Where does the macro structure begin? to get destroyed well that gaussian channel is going to be one of the first warning signs second warning sign is going to be dixie which i can see already dixie above 103.40 our pivot and we did say well above there next pivot is 104.20 and you know frankly uh just just as we uh, you know had a bit of a reclaim of the range here and we said that was probably a bear trap going to test this trend line. If this trend line breaks, we were targeting a move up to the 618, which is going to be this nice beef, <laughs> nice, nice box of peace and prosperity and death and despair, bringing up that point here as Dixie is rising. The U.S. Uh, government is trying to sell off its bonds. Yields yesterday climbed on the 10 year and the 30 year to hit their highest level since 2007 and 2011. When bond yields are climbing that high, right? People are thinking, look, Two year at 5%, or I could own stocks, or I could own stocks uh, at, you know, at all time highs in a bear market, ahead of a recession, ahead of many unknown certainties. Um, and so with, you know, the most, most sensitive rate is the two year at 5%. But uh, the 30 year and just reminding everybody, the in, the uninverting of the yield curve is actually what causes that recession. So that is the rumor on the street and uninverted yield curve is what's causing the recession. We are heading up to that target of 522. We've had this uh, long time back, long time coming. 30 year uh, has more to go. 30 year is probably going to keep climbing here. And the 10 year also 10 year looks like a breakout and next target up 491 um, and a retest of this trend line uh, that yeah, any kind of a closure here or higher. We, we pretty much got it there. I think we called that out last week and it looks like it's going to rip today, uh, ripping today to the upside. So we'll see what 
Powell has to say coming up on, uh, I think it is Thursday at the Jackson Hole meeting. Remember last year, they came out of that meeting and called him Paul Volcker, right? Jerome Powell um, spanked the market last year around the Jackson Hole meeting. Existing home sales today at 0.5% and 4.15. Let's see if it if it came out while we were talking here and looks like not yet, not yet. And a Fed Bowman speech. I always wonder where these speeches are. I never quite catch them. And then S&P Global Manufacturing tomorrow, new home sales tomorrow. Real estate holding up pretty good. And here's what they're all saying is, look, the golden hand cuffs, the average rate on 30 year fixed mortgage has jumped 44 basis points in August and 29 basis points over the past week alone. Currently stands at 7.48%. It's the highest rate in over 22 years and 17% higher than a year ago at 5.72%. Meanwhile, 91% of U.S. mortgage borrowers currently have mortgage rates below 5%. This helps explain the divergence in weak existing home sales where homeowners understandably don't want to leave their home. Anyways, I'm trying to catch the rest of these trades as the market is now open. It is 6.45. And what typically happens in those early hours, look at NASDAQ trying to bounce off of the box of peace and prosperity and death and despair. And to me, the bounce is going to get faded. Any kind of a lower high, I am looking to short this one down uh, on NASDAQ. Same thing on the S&P. Again, not financial advice, not a financial advisor, but any kind of a lower high here, uh, as we did not even fill the gap yet. Uh, looking lower and same thing on Dow Jones, which has already filled the gap, looking weaker than all of them and has not quite hit, but we did hit that 15 minute head and shoulders from the other day. Uh, pretty nice. We overshot that one. And um, yeah, I think that's it for that. Bitcoin dominance taking a leg up here. So altcoins probably going to be on the receiving end of that one. Big leg up check out on the 15 minute time frame. That was the 15 minute. So daily is still down. Overall, we're below 50%. So nothing to report there. Tether dominance, another, uh, another harbinger of death and despair. And if we see tether dominance get back above here, you know, it's going to be wreck city. Not good. This was November 2020. So Tether dominance goes up. Bad for altcoins, bad for Bitcoin. Uh, checking in on gold as I haven't checked in on him in a while. Excuse me. Uh, gold spot here on the daily. Let's see. As the dollar goes up, gold goes down. But it does look like looking for a bounce sooner than later. Uh, minimum bounce target probably going to be around 1930. And then we got the daily downtrend uh, for gold, which is going to be in line with, you know, Bitcoin taking a bit of a cool off. Uh, goal weekly to be fair. Yeah, weekly. Uh, that is a toppy formation, kind of an M formation and downside target kind of already hit though. So um, lower high on the weekly momentum is to the downside. Volatility is just beginning to increase. And from a low level, you can see the last increase Expansion got us a move to the upside. This one looks like expansion to the downside. Probably targeting that purple 200 at uh, 765. If this wick gets taken out, we already got it taken out. Yeah, so probably going to target that next level at about 1800. And um, yeah, going to be a little bit bearishly biased for gold right now. And gold does look like it wants to test the bottom side of the range here today. That probably means what is Dixie doing? Taking a leg up here. I got to find that site uh, where you can you can trade crypto gold. Needless to say, I am going to leave you guys off with that. I hope you have a blessed and highly favored day. Enjoy your Tuesday, your taco Tuesday, your turnaround Tuesday. That's it. Signing out. Take care.